Okay, in our last lecture, we were looking at stability and feedback, and we saw that for a single stage amplifier, that the amplifier with only one pole is inherently stable. If we add a second stage, we add a second independent pole, and when we connect feedback uh, around that, uh, we have potential for um, near instability or at least ringing. So what we're going to try and do in order to compensate the amplifier so that it can work in feedback with multiple poles is to try and separate the poles as far apart as possible. Our goal is to make the omega P1, the dominant pole, smaller in frequency while making the omega P2, which is the second pole, larger in frequency, or at least keeping omega P2 the same. Now, what we're going to note is that for 45 degree phase margin in the open loop, we'd like to set our omega P1 to be the omega 3 dB of the amplifier. And we'd like to set omega P2 so that it intersects the closed loop response at a frequency where the loop gain goes to unity. So just to restate that, what we're going to try and do is set omega P2 at whatever frequency it is that our loop gain goes to unity. Now this is going to depend upon how much closed loop gain we're aiming to get from our amplifier. But in the worst case, we typically set our amplifier to operate as a buffer uh, or as a unity gain amplifier, and that sets the worst case possible feedback condition for the amplifier. Now, here's our two-stage amplifier, and we're going to uh, do what's called a two-stage Miller compensation. In the Miller compensation, we're going to add a capacitor around our second stage, inverting gain. Uh, and this is, of course, now a Miller capacitor. We're going to call this a compensation capacitor, C sub C. We model our first stage as a transconductance. And this is because the first stage differential pair with an active load uh, has a transconductance uh, given by the differential pair. And it has a relatively high impedance. So it looks more like a current source uh, than it does a voltage amplifier. Uh, so this is a reasonably good model. Now the current IX that flows through the compensation capacitor is equal to big GM of that first stage times the input voltage. And our output voltage, V out, is equal to IX times the impedance of the capacitor, which is 1 over S C times C. This is assuming we place a virtual short at the output of the first stage. Now, this model is only valid at high frequency, but what we can ultimately find is that V out over Vn is equal to Gm1 over Scc. So if we plot this, we find basically that the output frequency or the the uh, the, the gain, the magnitude of the gain, uh, rolls off at 20 dBs per decade. And we're going to look for the frequency where the closed loop intersects with the open loop gain. And we're going to try and set the second pole frequency of the amplifier equal to omega p2 at that particular, or, uh, sorry, uh, at that particular closed loop gain. Okay, so we have that the magnitude of the voltage gain is equal to gm over scc, at least at high frequencies, where the capacitor is very big. 
and we must equal the closed loop gain. It must equal the closed loop gain at the frequency corresponding to the target phase margin. For a phase margin of 45 degrees, omega unity loop gain is equal to omega at the mag uh, at the frequency where the magnitude of t of j omega is equal to one. So we set omega unity loop gain equal to omega p2. And if we solve for the total capacitance that we require for this phase margin at this closed loop gain, it would be gm1 divided by omega p2 times a closed loop. Now we can adjust for different phase margins. So for instance, for a phase margin of 60 degrees, omega unity loop gain would be equal to omega p2 divided by 1.73. And then we could say that our compensation capacitor was equal to 1.73 times GM1 divided by omega P2 times A closed loop. In fact, for a generic phase margin, For a generic phase margin of x degrees, we just multiply the compensation capacitor uh, equation for the 45 degree phase margin by a factor of tangent of x degrees, where x degrees is the desired phase margin. Now, make sure that your calculator is set into the degree mode when you're doing that tangent, uh, or you'll get a wrong answer. Uh, you can always double check this for the uh, 60 degree phase margin by making sure that for 60 degrees, the factor is 1.73. Okay, so this is a graphical way of sizing the compensation capacitor and the Miller uh, circuit. Uh, what we're going to do next is some basic circuit analysis, and we'll do that in the next video.